to safeguard the health and wellness of our students and of our college community, Rowan College of South Jersey will offer online instruction this fall, with just a few exceptions for classes requiring a hands-on component. Here to tell us more about this are Dr. Brendan Rickards, who is our provost and vice president of academic services, and Dr. Susan Hall, who is the dean of our nursing and health professions division, as well as our medical director. Dr. Rickards, I'd like to start with you. Please describe the options that students will have this fall. So what we decided as a college at RCSJ was our drive here is to keep not only the students and faculty and staff safe, but also the families. So what we have done moving forward for the fall term, keeping in mind all of the things that are going around us, is we have designed several different options for students to enroll in class. The key point here is everything that was designed was designed with the health and safety and well-being of all of those that our students and our faculty and staff would come into contact with. So academically, our course offerings are going to be in one of three different formats. The first one is our traditional online delivery. When we think of traditional online, what this means is that the faculty would have prepared course material that they will put on Blackboard, which is our CSJ's course management system. The students can then access this course material on their own time. They are not required to log on at a very specific time in order to complete the work. They will have deadlines and due dates that they have to meet as they do their work. So for example, you may have something due as a student at 11 p.m. on a Friday, some of you may choose to do that at 10 p.m. that Friday. Some of you may choose to do that at 2 a.m. on Wednesday. In any case, when you do these types of learning with the traditional online, it's referred to as asynchronous learning, where you are not logging on at that specific time. You are doing that work on your time, on your schedule, and you can make the work fit your work schedules or your personal life schedule while still meeting those deadlines. The newest delivery option that we are delivering is called live online. In live online courses, what we have done is the faculty are working to design interactive lessons where the students as well as the faculty log on to Blackboard and access a true live lecture through Zoom. As they access this, what they do is they would log on at a very specific scheduled time for their courses. They then interact with the faculty as well as other students in that live online class. It's called live online because the material is delivered in real time at scheduled interactive time. With this actual interaction, students can ask questions in real time during a lecture as if they were in a classroom. They can also interact with one another and the faculty as if they were in the classroom. It allows for that actual one-on-one -on -one delivery where the students can interact, but it allows for the physical distancing where we can keep students as well as faculty and by extension, the families of individuals safe. The third type of delivery that we are offering is what we're gonna to refer to as the hybrid delivery. With this hybrid delivery, what we are doing is we are putting a majority of the class in an online format. In some cases, it will be the asynchronous delivery. That's the traditional one I referred to. Other cases, it will be as live online. However, these hybrid courses will also have a hands-on component that cannot be met just by meeting in an online delivery. The courses that will have this type of delivery format are the ones that require hands-on learning, hands-on competencies, or require students to do specific and demonstrate specific competencies and learning skills for external accreditation. So the courses that we're looking at that will have this hybrid delivery are limited. However, these will include the courses that are offered for our nursing students, for our other health profession students, such as radiography, diagnostic medical sonography, physical therapist assistant, and nuclear medicine technology. Lastly, these other types of deliveries will also be extended to some of our non-credit as well as other credit certificate programs, such as our DCMA program, as well as some of our other hands-on laboratory courses, such as forensic science, and some of our other courses like ceramic. The bottom line here, when you look at these hybrid types of deliveries, these, once again, are required for students, and they will be so that students can gain those competencies that they will need to be successful in their profession. And these are things that are required for students to gain licensure for their future careers. So in summary, with these three different types of deliveries, what we have done is we have set up a safe learning environment 
that will allow students to gain the knowledge necessary to get you to your future careers, as well as keep you, the faculty and staff of RCSJ, and the families of everybody involved in Southern New Jersey safe and healthy. Dr. Hall, what are some factors that were considered in making this decision? So some of the factors that were considered in making this decision for the instructional process was what is really happening with this virus. We have a lot of unknowns. Uh, this virus obviously is new to not only our scientific fields, but also our academic fields and what can we do? I can't echo uh, enough more than what Dr. Rickard stated is our goal at our CSJ on both the Gloucester and Cumberland campus is to keep our students safe, our faculty safe, our staff safe, and of course, those of our family members that we come in contact with. Since we have so many unknowns with the virus, we decided to err on the side of caution. We used a lot of our external resources, such as our county health department representatives, the CDC, our New Jersey State of, uh, Department of Health for guidance, for direction, for data, and uh, of course our closest um, medical providers in the Rowan School of Medicine in regards to our decision making. This came in um, various forms, but I can say that we've had dialogue almost weekly with these various representatives so that our decisions were informed, they were evidence-based, and they were in uh, the utmost of keeping everyone safe. What are some safety measures that will be in place for those who need to visit our campus? So at each building on both campuses, we have an opportunity for um, both our employees and our students and those potential students to have their temperature screened. We know that temperature is an indication of a possible infection. Um, so we're using that tool just as a uh, entry level stage. For our employees, we'll have daily screening and questionnaire regarding symptoms and with constant education of knowing that if symptoms all of a sudden become uh, present, that they will not report to work. Our students for those card out programs that need to happen in our health professions areas, they will be monitored by their program director um, and they will be in their classrooms using that social distancing uh, protocol as well as PPE. Dr. Rickards, I've been hearing that students are thinking about taking a gap year. What are your thoughts on that? What I would encourage instead of taking this gap year would be to enroll at RCSJ either as a part-time or full-time student and take general education credits. The reason to do this is twofold. First, it will not set you back in your career in any means. Secondly, it will allow you as a student to hone your skills stay on top of your work, not forget some of the math or the general education that you may go back in a year or two and say, oh my gosh, what do I need to remember to get me successful in this course? We are offering the exact same type of delivery method that many of our four-year partners around the country will be doing. However, what you can do is you can stay home in a safe environment and take these actual same courses that are required pretty much across the board. So for example, when you think of your general education class, General education means that these are classes that are required for any major that you may pursue and generally will transfer to almost any four-year institution in the country. You can start to think about your English one and two, uh, some of your sciences, biology one and two, chemistry one and two, anatomy and physiology one and two, psychology, sociology. At RCSJ, we offer all of these actual courses. I would say as a student, you should attend RCSJ you should take several classes to keep those skills as opposed to staying away and delaying uh, your college career. That way you stay on top of it and you do not fall behind. The other thing that allows, again, is the health and your own safety. As a parent myself, if I were to have a child that was of the age going to college, I would absolutely be looking at RCSJ or any of your local community colleges, what have you, to begin your college career because you will be getting a very, very high quality education because at RCSJ, the faculty are here because they are extremely dedicated to their pedagogy and their teaching, and they will spend the time to help you as a student be successful and prepare you for transfer to whatever your goal is for your four institutions. 
the final thing to consider when you're looking at skipping that gap year and enrolling at RCSJ or any of your other local community colleges is the actual financial impact that this could have on your future. When you look at the actual cost of attending a community college, in some cases it is tenfold less expensive than your local four-year schools. So you can save yourself a whole lot of money by attending RCSJ or those other community colleges at a less expensive cost where you can now pass that savings on to your future academic career or for your future in purchasing a house or a car or what have you. So just keep that in the back of your mind. The education that you would receive is second to none and you can do it at a much lower cost than if you were to attend a four-year school right off the bat. Is there anything that either of you would like to add? Um, I guess collectively, I have to say it's been a pleasure to be involved in this process regarding um, the decisions that the administration made for the college. These decisions were not easy. They certainly are um, ever changing as we know the virus is changing and the information we're receiving almost daily is changing. Using the resources outside uh, from the Rowan School of Medicine, our uh, county health department representatives helped us make what we feel are informed decisions, but also knowing that it can, it can change. We had no idea this time last year that we'd be finishing up the spring semester the way we did. Mm -hmm. And yet we feel that we're better prepared going into the fall, but the priority is that we're keeping everyone safe. Well, I am one of the people who will be on campus a few days a week, and it is reassuring to hear the precautions that have been taken for our safety. Thank you so much for the update.